Hey guys, it's Alex with Hammond Watch. Uh, I'm here today with the Hamilton Field Automatic Chronograph. Uh, its reference number is H7161635. And in my opinion, this is the absolute best entry level Swiss automatic chronograph you can pick up uh, when it's in stock. And uh, I'll explain that a little bit at the end when we start covering the price. But uh, let's first kind of go over the, the measurements here. You're, you're looking at a 42 millimeter case. Uh, it is a pretty thick watch at 15 millimeters. Uh, you have a really nice signed 7 millimeter crown and it is screw down, which is really nice. Uh, your pushers are 4.4 millimeters. Uh, lug tip to lug tip is 50.8. Uh, but if you bring the strap in and get a little bit closer to where your spring bars actually sit, uh, you're looking at 49. Uh, so it still wears relatively comfortably. Again, as long as you're okay with, with that overall thickness. Uh, the lug width here uh, is 20 millimeters, so nice and standard. Uh, there's a little bit a slight taper uh, before the big taper at the tip you, you dip down to about 19.5 uh, uh, and then on the buckle side the buckle itself jumps up to about 24.5 the strap itself is actually really enjoyable uh, I love the color uh, the stitching is incredibly uniform and I think it looks really nice on the keepers uh, the texture it's not quite like a real suede it almost feels like a, a new buck, if that makes any sense. Um, moves around a little bit, and you can see the pattern change as you run your finger across it, but uh, incredibly soft and supple. Um, it is thick enough to hold a, a watch this size in place, uh, but it is pliable enough that you're not really gonna have a, an awkward break in time where this is uncomfortable. Uh, you also have a leather backing, uh, which is gonna help the strap kind of last a little bit longer. You know, some of these sections here that are that exposed softer material are going to stain pretty quickly. Um, but in general, the, the strap's not going to wear much faster because of that. It's just going to look a little bit more worn. Uh, the case back is screw down. Uh, you get some general specifications with the water resistance and Swiss made. Uh, then a couple identification numbers and then obviously an exhibition case back. Uh, the movement housed in here is the H21, that's a, a Valju 7750. Uh, you get a 60 hour power reserve and then obviously it's an automatic chronograph movement. It does provide for hacking and hand winding. Uh, and Hamilton doesn't really use the, the base grade of ETA movement or, or at least Valju movement. Uh, so this is the Elabore. Uh, there are a few different uh, grades to the Valju. It, they have a basic or a standard Elabore and, and top. Uh, they all boast just slightly different specifications. Uh, but this watch out of the box should be running at plus or minus seven seconds. Uh, this one is running at minus seven on the nose. Uh, so I'm pretty pleased with the overall performance so far. One of the things I'm really impressed with most on this watch is the dial itself. Uh, they did away with having a running seconds hand. Uh, your main seconds hand is your chronograph seconds. Uh, your sub dial at 12 o'clock will count off 30 minute increments. And then at six o'clock you have your 12 hours. Uh, I think the lack of the running seconds hand was a great choice. It really helps to keep the dial clean. And it doesn't cut off any of the numerals going around the dial, which tends to be a bit of a pet peeve for me. Uh, the sub dials at 12 and six are both sunken in with a nice polished ring around them. Uh, the center circle, which houses that applied Hamilton logo, and then the Hamilton khaki text, uh, is raised up slightly and smooth. And then you move to that outer track that has the numerals, uh, and there's a nice radial pattern to it. So you get a few different finishes, a, a few different depths, and I, I think all together it ties in well. Uh, all of the printing is extremely crisp. Uh, and then you'll see, too, outside of those numerals, the, the small little circles that uh, hold the luminescent material around each are actually raised just adding a, a little bit more light play a, a little bit more depth uh, And I think they just could not have done a, a better job visually with the watch when it comes to the loom You can see they didn't go crazy on the dial uh, You just have a single dot at each hour marker uh, a loom tip to the chronograph seconds hand uh, as well as on the hour and minutes hands 
and it looks really good. Um, like most Hamilton khakis, it's not going to make it through the night, uh, but in general, it does feel and seem to be a stronger application. Uh, it is starting to fade, uh, but it's taking much longer than it would with a, a traditional kind of khaki field watch. To give you a little bit better idea of what I'm talking about when I compare the two, here we are next to a 40 millimeter Hamilton khaki field. Uh, the field watch is the brown dial, so we're talking about the same kind of faux tinted loom. Uh, and you can see right away, the, the chronograph is glowing much brighter. Uh, the numerals on the field are already starting to fade out. Uh, the hands are less vivid. Uh, so props to Hamilton. They, they certainly charge more for the chronograph, uh, but they did at least step up their application in what's typically a, a pretty weak point of these watches. Here we are in my seven and a half to seven and three quarter inch wrist. And you can see, I mean, at 42 by 50, uh, it's really not a, an overpowering or oversized watch by any means. Uh, I think it looks well proportioned while having a, a pretty substantial footprint. Um, you do have that thickness uh, in the profile though. Uh, you'll typically know if 15 millimeters is a little bit too thick for you. Uh, if you've never had a Valju chronograph, I highly recommend you try one on before pulling the trigger. Uh, as that might be a breaking point and cost you the return shipping if it doesn't work out. So when I call this the best sw entry level Swiss automatic chronograph, uh, a big part of why I feel that way is its price. Uh, the retail cost of this watch is $1,695 USD. Um, but as long as you're comfortable going gray market, you're not going to have to pay anywhere near that. Uh, Ashford uh, is a company I brought up multiple times when it comes to Hamilton watches. You know, their inventory turns over a lot, so they may not always have what you're looking for, uh, but what they do have typically has fantastic pricing. Uh, right now, this is listed out at $838. Uh, additionally, they always have either a 10, 11, or 12% discount running. Uh, it's always posted right on the homepage of the website. I picked this up with an 11% discount, and after tax and shipping, it still made it to me for under $800 USD, and I think that's a tremendous value. Um, under $800 Swiss chronographs, you're looking at what I would consider to be some overly sporty Tissot models. Uh, you know, I think Mito and Certina kind of sneak in there sometimes, although those offerings tend to be a little bit dressier. Uh, this is the only one I feel is kind of versatile, versatile enough to pull off both situations. Uh, you could wear this in a pretty formal setting and not have any issues. Uh, you could also wear this with t-shirt and shorts and it would look right at home. You know, Hamilton khaki watches are kind of famously versatile uh, and this one to me at least is no different. Uh, you will see though, you know, this does tend to sell out off of their site and then restock every couple of months. Uh, so if you pop in to buy one and don't see it, just keep checking back. They'll eventually restock them. Um, Hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have, uh, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps in YouTube's algorithm. Uh, also, consider subscribing. You know, I put watch content out weekly at a minimum, and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. What?